Hello everybody and welcome to Bright Weird. Interesting subject today, one that will sound absolutely bonkers on the face of it, but stick with me to the end, I might just convert you. This is the mystery of perpetual lamps. It was common practice among early Egyptians, Greeks and Romans to seal lighted lamps in the sepulchres of their dead as offerings to the god of death. Possibly it was also believed that the deceased could use these lights in finding their way through the valley of the shadow. Later, as the custom became generally established, not only actual lamps but miniatures of them in terracotta were buried with the dead. Some of the lamps were enclosed in circular vessels for protection and instances have been recorded in which the original oil was found in them in a perfect state of preservation after more than 2,000 years. There is ample proof that many of these lamps were still burning when the sepulchres were sealed, and it has been declared that they were still burning when the vaults were opened hundreds or even thousands of years later. The possibility of preparing a fuel which would renew itself as rapidly as it was consumed has been the source of considerable controversy among medieval authors. After due consideration of the evidence at hand, it seems well within the range of possibility that ancient priests and chemists did manufacture lamps that burned, if not indefinitely, but at least for considerable periods of time. Numerous authorities have written on the subject of ever-burning lamps. William Wynne Westcott estimated the number of writers who had given the subject consideration to be as many as 150, and Helena Blavatsky said that it was as many as 173. While conclusions reached by different authors are certainly at variance, a majority admit the existence of these phenomenal lamps. Only a few maintained that the lamps would burn forever, but many were willing to concede that they might well remain alight for several centuries without the replenishment of fuel. Some considered the so-called perpetual lamps as mere artifices of the crafty pagan priests, while a great many, admitting the lamps actually burned, made sweeping assertion that the devil was using this apparent miracle to ensnare the credulous and thereby lead their souls to perdition. On this very subject, the learned Jesuit Athanasius Kircher, usually dependable, exhibits a striking inconsistency. He writes, Not few of these ever-burning lamps have been found to be the devices of devils, and I take it that all of the lamps found in tombs of the Gentiles, dedicated to the worship of certain gods, were of this kind not because they burned, or have been reported to burn with a perpetual flame, but because probably the devil set them there, meticulously intending thereby to obtain fresh credence for false worship. Having admitted that dependable authorities defend the existence of ever-burning lamps, and that even the devil lends himself to their manufacture, Kircher next declared the entire theory to be desperate and impossible and to be classed with perpetual motion in the Philosopher's Stone. Having already solved the problem to his satisfaction once, Kirker solves it again, but differently, in the following words. In Egypt there are rich deposits of asphalt and petroleum. What did these clever fellows the priests do then but connect an oil deposit by a secret duct with one or more lamps provided with the wicks of asbestos? How could such lamps help but burn perpetually? In my opinion, this is the solution of the riddle of the supernatural everlastingness of these ancient lamps. I, I don't know about the uh, legend of these ever-burning lamps. I really don't know which way to go on it. But I will say one thing. The, this lamp has been burning for several days. And if I look at the level inside, the level of olive oil has barely moved. So clearly this reservoir will sustain this lamp for some considerable amount of time. So the, if you was to connect this to a fuel source through a piping network to a huge reservoir, perhaps in a different room in the tomb, it could burn for a very long time indeed. The wick, of course, is a problem. The wick burns down. But if you was to use an asbestos wick, then that would certainly solve that problem. And these could potentially, oxygen permitting, burn for a very, very long time.
So here are a few examples of some claims of ever-burning lamps. Now, these ancient ever-burning lamps were usually found when a tomb or other enclosed place was opened and the lamp was still found burning, even though the enclosure had been sealed for hundreds or thousands of years. Here's an example, the Tomb of Pallas. Many early writers wrote of such lamps. For example, in the year 140 CE, the Tomb of Pallas, a son of a local Italian king, was opened and a single lamp was found burning near the corpse. Frightened, the assembled tried to put out the lamp. They discovered that neither water or blowing on it would extinguish the flame. Now, the flame finally extinguished when they emptied the unrecognisable liquid in the base of the lamp from the lamp's basin. Another example is a lamp that was believed to be lit for 550 years. Now there are numerous other chronicles of similar phenomena, but during the reign of uh, Emperor Justinian, a troop of soldiers stumbled across a lamp which, according to its inscription, was lit 550 years earlier. The soldiers could not figure out how this could be so. Another example is the tomb of Constantius Chlorus, In England, following his separation from the Roman Catholic Church, Henry VIII established the Church of England, and he soon after demanded that many Catholic churches, uh, monasteries and communities be destroyed and incorporated into his new Church of England. In one instance, the tomb of Constanius Chlorus, who died around 300 CE, was opened and found to contain a lamp that still burned. Another example is in the 1600s in France, there was a written chronicle of a soldier from Switzerland who discovered a long hidden tomb. Inside he found a single burning lamp and he removed it, took it away with him and it continued to burn for months with no apparent fuel until he accidentally broke it and it extinguished. During the papacy of Paul III in the Appian Way, where the abundance of chief heathens of old were laid, a sepulchre was opened where it was found the entire body of a fair virgin swimming in a wonderful juice, which kept it from putrefaction so well that the face seemed no way impaired, but lively and still very beautiful, even though she was dead. Her hair was yellow, tied up artificially, and kept together with a golden circlet or band. But it was what was under her feet that we are interested in, because under her feet burnt lamps, the light of which was extinguished at the very moment of opening of the sepulchre. One of the most celebrated examples of perpetual lamps is that that was found in the tomb of Pallas, who was the son of Evander, who Virgil wrote was killed by somebody called Turnus. Now it's uh, reported that it was found not far from Rome, as far forward in the year uh, as the year 1401. And uh, a chap was digging in the neighbourhood and um, he delved a little bit deeper than usual and he came upon a stone sepulchre which he broke into and inside there was the body of a man of extraordinary size and he was he was perfectly preserved again um, as if he was recently interred above the head of the deceased was found a lamp burning with the supposed fabulous perpetual fire neither wind nor water or anything else could put the fire out and the flame was eventually mastered by um, boring a hole into the bottom of the vessel and uh, and then the light went out. Now these have just been a few examples of the countless examples of perpetual lamps that have been found across the globe. Now I've only really touched on a few Roman examples here, but um, they can be found as far afield as South America, stories of people breaking into tombs there, um, and a- across the Middle East and the and the Far East and the Indian subcontinent. Pretty much everywhere you go in the world, there are not one or two, but literally hundreds of stories across the ages of people breaking into sealed tombs where there has been a perpetual lamp burning. So I'm sure there's something in the story. Consider for a moment that there were no lamps at all. Perhaps it's all in the language. Maybe when those tomb raiders entered, upon seeing all of the treasure and possessions of the dead strewn around, they simply said, his light still burns strongly meaning the spirit of the deceased could still be felt, as opposed to a physical lamp that was burning, a simple use of language that could easily lead to confusion. Perhaps there's a chemical reason for it. The term alchemy comes from alchemy, and the old name for Egypt is chem, and they were indeed learned scientists and chemists. Proven by many arts, for example, mummification requires a great deal of understanding of chemistry. Perhaps those clever priests did indeed find a chemical method 
for a fuel that could renew itself chemically as fast as it was consumed in a hermetically sealed chamber. Perhaps there were oil lamps, but they had burnt out centuries before. But the sealed tomb had preserved the smell of the burning oil until the tomb was reopened. You know, it would be easy with all of the dust of breaking in, combined with the smell of lamps that were still in the tomb, to be confused with an actual lamp that extinguished at the moment of entering. While we're on chemistry, it's not a widely known fact that ancient priests had a working knowledge of batteries and electricity. They were certainly able to make chemical batteries, and the Baghdad battery is one such example. Let's put chemistry aside for a moment. It's believed by many researchers that the Egyptians harnessed the piezoelectric effects of crystalline granite. Google piezoelectric effect. It's what makes your quartz watch work. Or that spark generating piezoelectric cooker lighter that you may have used on many occasions without even realising that it makes a spark without any batteries in it. I think one of the greatest smoking guns of all are the wall carvings at the Dendera Temple in Egypt. They've caused such controversy among archaeologists and are a topic worthy of a video in their own right. Let's not forget that these wall carvings are hidden between the walls at the Dendera Temple and are not easy to find. To make an electrical light bulb, you need the ability to hermetically seal a conductor in a vacuum or a vessel filled with a non-combustible gas. Hermetically sealed. An interesting term. Did you know it comes from Hermes Tresmegestis, an Egyptian god also known as Thoth? Let's not call Thoth a god, let's call him an ancient scientist. The Egyptians were the source of the term hermetically sealed, so it stands to reason that they were able to hermetically seal things. The most ancient Egyptians were a genius, advanced race that traditional society would have you believe were Luddites fumbling in the Stone Age. Nothing could be further from the truth. Let's remember that most ancient tombs do not have soot marks on the ceiling, which leads to the question, how did they see in the dark without oil lamps? To me, electrical bulbs seem a likely and simple candidate for this mystery. Okay, let's leave ancient Egypt for a minute and dive forward to the 13th century, which is still hundreds of years before electricity was officially invented. And uh, here we'll find in the 13th century an enigmatic figure called Gichil, a French rabbi. Um, and it was said that um, outside his house there was a strange lamp that burned continually without any apparent supply of oil. When questioned about the workings of his miraculous lamp, Gichil, the rabbi, refused to discuss the mechanics of it. Now, the lamp outside his 13th century house was not the only puzzling feature of the rabbi's front door. Contemporary accounts say that the knocker on his front door would give off sparks when unwelcome visitors came to call. Now, modern theorists believe that Gichil somehow managed to channel a primitive form of electricity, but nobody knows for sure. Perhaps he had been studying ancient Egyptian text. So there were many explanations that could explain the mystery of perpetual lamps. And I'm not going to touch on any, any more today because there are so many theories. But one final one that I would like to throw out there which really needs a, needs a leap of faith is Schrodinger's cat. My favourite solution. And it needs a good deal of quantum understanding to realise the temporal possibilities of what can happen in a hermetically sealed tomb. Now, as far as quantum physics goes... The lamp didn't care if it was burning or not, it just existed. But outside the tomb, the hermetically sealed tomb, it was neither lit or extinguished. The act of observing is what determines its state. Well, certainly an interesting subject with a lot to take in that one. This has been Perpetual Lamps. I'm Steve. This is Bright Weird. Thanks for watching.